Good morning, everybody. Um, <laughs> there's some Australians in the crowd. Thank you very much for that warm, warm welcome. Um, it's a little bit confusing for us. I'm from the tax office. People usually cheer when we leave, not when we arrive. So we're off to a pretty good start. This is about the best day ever so far. Um, thank you very much for being here. I had a really good day at Summit yesterday. I'm looking forward to a really good day today. I wanted to uh, thank Teresa and my local team, Andrew and Selwyn, for the invitation to come along and have a talk to you about our cloud journey. Our cloud journey is one that started about three or four years ago. We think it's a pretty cool story. It's a pretty interesting story. And hopefully, by sharing it with you over the next few minutes, there's a chance for you to draw some pearls of wisdom out of our story that can help you along the way. Now, our cloud story, as I said, started about 2013. Now, I've been in Washington since late Sunday night. I've been walking the streets of Washington constantly. And the one thing that struck me over the last three or four days is just how much Americans love their IRS. Everywhere I go, people have been stopping me saying it's a fantastic relationship. And it's made me somewhat envious about the way in which the ATO operates, because about three or four years ago, we were about the most unpopular organization on the planet. But luckily for us, we appointed a new CEO. And when our CEO arrived, he came out with a mantra about one key word, and that word was reinvention. He challenged all of us in the ATO to think about the way in which we could reinvent ourselves. And he particularly focused on, he focused on a range of characteristics. But the two major characteristics that resonated with us in the IT department were the need to provide citizen-centric services, and also about making sure those services were delivered digital by default. So a really strong message, 2013, the need to be focusing on our clients or our citizens and to move towards those services being delivered digitally. Now, at the time, the tax office, we were about as traditional a data center organization as you could be. So when we heard those messages, challenged by our CEO, we knew we had to go through an IT transformation. It was really clear to us that the way in which we'd been operating for the last 30 or 40 years, when we thought about how we needed to project towards the future, we needed to change. And interestingly for us, there was never any doubt for us that cloud was going to form part of that IT transformation. The important point, though, was this didn't start from an IT perspective. Our cloud journey started from a business perspective. Now, when we got into our cloud journey, and the good thing about coming along to a summit like this is you get the chance to think about what you've done over the last three or four years. And for us, we've got it down to three key things. The first of those is culture, the second of those is vision, and then the third of those is action. And while we've had to address a range of cultural implications in our organization over that period of time, these three are the ones that stand out the most to me. People, partners, and security. And I want to spend just a little bit of time about security. I really loved Ian's point yesterday about the Ministry of No. We call them the Department of No. The people that any time you have a really good idea, the first thing they tell you is no. And for us, the single biggest no conversation then, it still is a little bit now, is around security. So for us to get started on our cloud journey, this was the number one issue that we needed to address. We focused on three key things. The first of those is data center sovereignty. Our data centers need to be on Australian soil. That was OK. The second one was we needed to take protected data off the table. We don't necessarily agree that it should be off the table for a long period of time, but we were happy to take it off the table if it allowed us to focus on everything else being on the table. And in our business, there's a lot of data that we need to focus on that's below the protected level. So we took protected data off the table. The third one was we got our security people into a room and we challenged them to design a set of requirements for the cloud that would meet what they thought it needed to be. But we gave them two challenges. The first thing we said was it needs to meet a client-centric digital organization. It can't be some utopic standard that we can never, ever achieve. Okay. They went away. They worked with our AWS team. And lo and behold, we were able to create a security posture that meets the needs of our federal government. But then we did a second really interesting thing. We asked them to take those cloud requirements and run an assessment against our current infrastructure security platform. 
we have spent more days worrying about our on-premise infrastructure than we have about our cloud. And I guess, like a lot of people in the audience, we've had a couple of instances in the last two to four weeks where we've been able to easily, agile respond to a couple of security threats in our cloud environment, and we're still working through how to resolve those in our on-premise infrastructure. If you're driving a cloud transformation on a cloud journey, you need to own the cultural conversation. You need to shift the no's to yeses. That's the first step. Let's now talk about the second step. This is our cloud vision. We call it the purple horseshoe. It's clearly got purple in the coloring and it's shaped like a horseshoe, so there's no rocket science about how we thought about this. This became, and this is about now, maybe two, two and a half years old. And it's not so much about the content. What this is, this became an open invitation, an opportunity to all of our partners to be very clear about where the ATO was heading. And when we shared this vision with our partners and we shared it with the partners that we had a commercial engagement with, and we also shared it with the partners that we didn't have a commercial engagement with, we asked one simple question. Show us where you add value in that ecosystem. It's all the question that we asked. If you could find a way to answer that question, yes, we guaranteed you work. We didn't care if we had a contract with you or not. We offered the invitation, and if you showed us that you could say yes, then we guaranteed you some work. Interestingly enough, the one organization then is the same organization today that most espouses the values that we're looking in partners, and that was AWS. By sharing this vision, we changed the second key cultural level, all about our partners. At some point in time, you've got to, stop, you've got to stop talking, don't you? You've actually got to start doing something. So if the first one was culture and the second one was values, the third one was action. I was really pleased to hear Verna say yesterday, if you want to get started, start with infrastructure and start with dev test, because that's exactly where we started. Okay? Infrastructure as a service, development and test environments. A couple of things happened for us on our cloud journey. We saw all the benefits that cloud espouse. We saw some economic benefits. We saw project life cycles being reduced, infrastructure provisioning times reduced as well. All the benefits that have been talked about were all achieved. The most important point, though, about starting with infrastructure as a service was that it liberated our people. We had no idea how frustrated our workforce were, our developer workforce, working in an IT environment that they considered archaic. The minute that we opened up cloud, we saw significant increases in employee and staff engagement. It gave us that final cultural lever that we needed to change, the one about people. Unfortunately, though, and we were patting ourselves on the back at this time, the Department of No is ever present, and they challenged us about, it's really good to be able to do an infrastructure deployment, but what about applications? On the screen right now, you will see a couple of key mission-critical applications to the tax experience. One is called ato.gov.au, which is our website where people can get some information about their tax return. And the second one of those is our My Tax application. It allows you to lodge your tax return electronically on your smartphone or smart tablet. This is what I consider to be the quintessential client-centric digital experience. And on the 1st of July 2017, all of that is running on the AWS platform. Infrastructure tick, application tick. Our cloud journey is going ahead in leaps and bounds. Last point. This is the slide that I created. Next, as you can see, it's technology savvy. It's a blank screen. The intention being to actually say, we're at the stage right now where it's a blank canvas. We need to start thinking about not where we go on our cloud journey, but how we continue to work in our cloud journey. I think we've got two key challenges. The first of those is to move towards platform as a service, and we're already working with our AWS colleagues about that. The second major challenge for us is how we bring about that really strong concept of a digital marketplace. And from the Australian point of view, we're seeing that digital marketplace characterized by terms like high availability, high resilience, high security, high scale. And it needs to be, particularly now, and I think in the government sector, a 24 by 7 non-stop service. That's the next challenge for us. It's a challenge that we're really excited about. It's a challenge that we're looking forward to. It's also a challenge that we have great confidence in. And our confidence is based on two points. 
the significant investment that we've made in our AWS platform and the even more significant investment that we've made in our AWS relationship. We are really excited about the next steps. I want to invite every single person in the room down to Canberra in August where you'll be at the world's best summit you could possibly imagine. Thank you very much for listening and enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers. <laughs>